minutes away from the start of an important hearing before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. We'll hear the chairman uh, gavel this hearing, Bob Menendez of New Jersey. Then the secretaries of state and defense will testify together with the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. As we await the start of the hearing, lots of anticipation. Let's bring in two guests, the former Republican presidential candidate, former Congressman Ron Paul is joining us, also Democratic Congressman Mike Quigley of Illinois. Uh, 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 Congressman Paul, first to you. Uh, you are totally, correct me if I'm wrong, totally opposed to any U.S. military force in Syria right now, despite all of that evidence that the Syrian regime used chemical weapons against its own people. Is that right? Yeah, but I don't accept your uh, statement because I, I think that uh, a lot of people question some of that evidence. But I don't need, that is beside the point because of the policy that I advocate is a non-interventionist foreign policy. I don't believe it's in our interest. I don't believe it's our national security best interest to be involved. I don't think it's legal under national law or international law. I think just killing more people because he has killed some people, if that is the case, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So a non-interventionist doesn't pretend that they are all wise, that they can go into a country that's been in civil war, where there's several different factions fighting and killing each other, there's Christians getting killed by rebels and, and the uh, Assad regime being blamed for doing this and that. I don't believe it's capable morally, nor are we able to go in and say, oh, we know who the good guys are. We know there's three different groups on the rebels, but we know that we won't give any help to the Al-Qaeda. We just have to punish uh, Assad. It's a civil war, and there's no way you're going to figure it out. I smell Iraq all over again. I remember the assurances that were given us uh, 10 years ago. And members of Congress believe that. But let me tell you, the situation is a lot different. The American people are on my side on this issue today. And there's a lot more people in Congress now are saying it makes no sense. And just listen to the military commanders. They said, you know, we don't even have the money for this. We have to have a supplemental. Now, how about all these warmongers getting ready to bomb and kill and invade or do whatever they think necessary and they don't even have the money and then they have to appropriate the money which means more money drained right. from our economy so the policy of a non-intervention as a matter of fact it's it's pretty easy we just mind our own business take care of america and b obey the law and obey the constitution then you don't have to pretend oh i know how bad assad is and i know that he's a little bit worse than the al-qaeda so this go on the side of the al-qaeda makes no sense whatsoever to us all right congressman ron paul totally totally opposed to any U.S. involvement in Syria and doesn't necessarily even believe the uh, President of the United States, the Secretary of State, when they say they have high confidence that uh, the Syrians did in fact use chemical weapons against their own people. Uh, Congressman Quigley, uh, give us your reaction. Do uh, you think Ron Paul is right or do you think President Obama is right? Well, uh, let me just say this. Um, it is clear to me after being briefed that there are gas attacks took place and that the Assad regime was responsible. The question is, what do we do now? I have every faith in the administration was honest and forthright about that process. Uh, this is an extraordinarily messy sectarian struggle. It is not exactly clear to me at this point that our involvement will help the situation and perhaps not create unintended consequences. So I think there are serious questions to be answered, but trust in the administration isn't one of those. Uh, Ron Paul, as you take a look at what's going on, and you know, there's going to be a huge debate uh, that begins within the next few minutes in the Senate before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. The House is going to take up all of these matters. There'll be floor debates, close votes, I assume, in both the House and the Senate. We know how you would vote if you were still a member, but why is it that so many Republicans, including John McCain, Lindsey Graham, and others, they not only want the president to go ahead and launch strikes against targets inside Syria, but they want to go even further than what the president says he wants to do. These are members of your own party. Why is there this serious split between those, shall we say, more libertarian, isolationist types, non-interventionist types like you and, and your son, Senator Rand Paul, and, and people like John McCain and Lindsey Graham? Well, I think people are waking up. Uh, there's been a Tea Party movement, a grassroots movement. The young people uh, in the Congress, the newer members are on our side on this. Just take a look at the bipartisan support we got for trying to rein in NSA. That was Democrats and Republicans, but sort of grassroots. And the leadership 
at both levels. They want the NSA and all this spying going on. This is what's going to happen on this vote. Leadership will probably get together and get some sort of uh, authority passed for the president to try to make him feel better or something. But how many people does he have to kill to feel better because he drew a line in the sand or had this red line? I mean, wh what was the purpose of all that? Nobody knows why we're going in there and nobody's sure who's, who are the good guys and the bad guys. But the people are waking up. They remember 10 years ago. They remember and they witness the results today of what's going on in Iraq. Now, even some people in Iraq are saying, well, do not go in there and bomb because we're going to help Assad. Some of the Shia wants to come in, you know, al Sadr wants to go in and help him. So this thing could easily spread. But who created, who had created Iraq? We did. That's our country. And now they're aligned with the Iranians. So the whole theory is that we're going into Syria because that's the way you march into our, Iran. At the same time, we've made it tougher. We've made it tougher for Israel. We've made it tougher for, uh, for the people who uh, want to live in peace in Iraq, and now we're just stirring it up in Syria. It's a civil war. We don't have the authority. And the vote in England, the British vote in the parliament, that is fantastic. The first right. time since 1782. Ron Paul, the people we, I, are getting in charge. The i got to wrap it up, but I just want to clarify one point. You're not blaming the United States for the civil war in Syria over the past two and a half years that have already resulted more than 100,000 people dead. I think we just lost Ron Paul. Unfortunately, the satellite must have gone down, but we'll, we'll, we'll have him back for sure. Ron Paul uh, joining us. Uh, Congressman Quigley, thanks to you as well. Mike Quigley joining us uh, from Illinois. Uh, let's bring